Good afternoon, everyone. Hope, how is everyone doing? Welcome back to our MASA webinar series. I'm Sim, and I will be the moderator for the webinar today. Today's session would be on Stretch Yourself for Wellness. I hope everyone is as excited as I am for today's session, but just bear with me for a few moments more as I would like to inform about some house rules. If you are having any queries, feel free to drop us a message at the comment session below, and we will discuss about it during the Q&A session. Worry not if your questions are not selected during the Q&A session, as our speaker will definitely reply you after our session has completed. Also, do remember to fill in the survey on the link provided below so that we can provide you the e-certificate. Appreciate your effort for the cooperation. So, without further ado, let me start by introducing our speaker for today's session. Our speaker today is a very dedicated lecturer who has spent almost a decade of his life in Malaysia to share his knowledge with us. He completed both his Bachelor of Physiotherapy and Masters of Physiotherapy in the Tamil Nadu Dr. MGR Medical University in India. He is specialized in treating musculoskeletal conditions and is currently pursuing his PhD in physiotherapy. So let us welcome Mr. Rama Krishnan to share with us about wellness and stretching. Welcome, Mr. Rama. The mic is all yeah. yours. Thank you, Mr. Sim, for a very good introduction. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. So today I'm going to talk about how stretching is helpful in maintaining the wellness. The webinar is mainly about to address the general public as well as for the students as well. How stretching contributes in maintaining the wellness of a person. Next slide, please. Wellness. What is wellness referring to? Is it living without illness? No, certainly not. Previous slide, please. Is it living without any illness? Certainly not. Okay. Wellness is an active process, continuous throughout the life. Especially, we have to make choices for living a healthy and that to fulfilling life is the most important one that is called as wellness. All the systems has to work perfectly in order to have a healthy and fulfilling life. Next slide please. According to National Wellness Institute, wellness is an active process of becoming aware of and making choices toward a more successful existence. Here the term aware is especially everyone should be aware of themselves, the wellness, how it can be maintained. There are many types of wellness, physical wellness, mental wellness, spiritual, emotional and social. Say for example, a person who is doing with uh, maintain a physic, he will be going for gym and of course he has to do the exercises regularly in order to maintain his physic. Example, if you could see bodybuilders, okay, they have to do the workouts regularly. If they could able to do the workouts, then only they will be maintaining their physic. If they are not able to do, example, during this COVID-19 MCO periods, we experience a lot of lockdowns. We may are not able to go to the other activities. Everything has been cut down. In those situations, it could be a mental stress for the person to maintain the physique. If he is not going to do that activity with the necessary equipments, definitely his physique will be lost. So it's the interlinking between the mental and the physical wellness. Similarly, if you could think about spiritual, again the person who is leading to a spiritual pathway, he should be having 
a mental freeness okay that wellness if you could see everything is linked together social linking together and sharing the thoughts is an another kind of most important wellness one here the social wellness is maintained and when we meet people the happiness we have is quite especially giving us stress relaxations okay so the mental wellness can be achieved apart of that there are so many wellness as well environmental wellness as well we have to keep our surroundings a greeny environment always it could be like giving a kind of relaxation feeling so these all components will be giving together when it is giving its proportion of activity in a human then only the whole purpose of wellness can be achieved next slide please what is physical wellness physical wellness of course it promotes the optimum health and of course functioning of the human body we all know that there are several systems in our body digestive system endocrine system okay example when we are getting anger automatically our endocrine systems will be getting activated and we will be showing our angerness in our face or in like throw hands or it could be expressed in any other way through facial reactions okay so but in order to make ourselves peaceful if we are doing some kind of activity a balanced activity that is the most important one so when we are planning to have a physical wellness it should be a combination of several elements as i stated previously and that helps to maintain the optimum health optimum the third the mention the word can be called as a conditioning in that way also we can take it up especially there should be a balancing with the physical activity nutrition and mental well being nowadays if you could see the world's greatest problem is having obesity all the developing countries and developed countries except few okay they are having this problem obesity is becoming most important problem in the world this is especially because of the lot lack of physical activity and improper food habits that is the nutrition if you could see people especially in japan people's eating habit is quite very very appropriate so the rate of obesity if you could see in japan is less than 3.5 percentage of the total population it is especially because of the activity and the nutrition that is the food habits and the mental well being what they are having which leads to a balancing between these activities and helps to maintain the wellness so this physical wellness is always crucial or having an importance to keep our body in condition nowadays in newspapers and all we can able to hear that because of the stress okay the person was not able to cope up with the stress either he can uh, like he underwent a cardiac arrest something like that many news we will be able to read it is because of the stress what the person is understanding uh what the person is having and he is not able to manage the stress accordingly so a balancing between if these activities are done especially the stress can be relaxed and of course physical activity it helps to strengthen the bones we all would have heard that when we are getting old the posture that is the our spine would be getting bended automatically okay this is especially because of the weakness of the bones in other ways which is called as demineralization or when the minerals are getting decreased in bones the bending posture of the spine which is occurring when we are getting aged this is can be prevented or can be overcome by means of doing physical activity weight bearing activities especially it helps the weakness of the bones and of course it strengthen the bone as well similarly a physical activity can help to strengthen the muscle and of course it reduces the risk of injury which is considered as the most important one in the prevention aspect next slide please 
stretching what is stretching if you could see this picture here a cheetah is doing a kind of relaxation okay of course this cheetah stretches the body in order to make the muscles to get elongated so that it can prepare for praying so a form of physical exercise stretching is a form of physical exercise in which a muscle or a tendon the tendon is the attachment part of a muscle here this portion can be elongated the elongation is the term called as stretching especially in order to improve the elasticity of the muscle and that should be felt by the person themselves when i am doing an elasticated activity i should be able to feel the elasticity in the muscle that is called as stretching as per definition it can be mentioned as a form of physical exercise in which a muscle or tendon or a muscle group which is deliberately that is deliberately referring to purposefully elongated or stretched in order to improve the muscle elasticity and felt by the person themselves that is the most important one in this webinar i'm going to talk about stretching in terms of general perspective i'm not talking in terms of the patient perspective next slide please stretching as i told you it is one of the most important component in the stretching of the muscles and soft tissues here this activity when it is done this is quite safe and useful for maintaining the health of adults especially it helps in improving the overall flexibility what is flexibility referring to okay example a person can you ask anyone to bend at the hip and try to touch the floor using the tip of the fingers like bending forward to touch the floor using the tip of fingers everyone can do especially if the knees are slightly bent but how many of you able to touch without bending the knees does it mean that the patient is not healthy not like that it means that for the persons who are not able to touch the tip of the fingers to the floor it could be the lack of flexibility or it could be due to individual differences okay so here the flexibility is not there whereas the another side of flexibility gymnast if you could see gymnasts they would be able to move the joints to many or as much extreme as it is possible they are training the body to adapt to that stretching from the childhood onwards okay which will be the most important component in maintaining their flexibility so flexibility is one of the most important component that has to be increased maintained by means of stretching of course by means of doing a stretching it helps to maintain the fullest available range of motion probably if we have older people at our home and those are not active if you could ask them they will be telling i am not able to lift my hands i am not able to lift my shoulders to the fullest level i am not able to bend fully so these kind of activities could be restricted especially because of the lack of physical movements so if a stretching of the muscles has been done that stretching helps to maintain the fullest available range of motion of the joint and it should be done at least 3 to 5 days in a week and this helps to reduce the risk of injury as well risk of injuries it could be common example a person who is starting to do an activity vigorously 
at one stretch, at one point, okay, that could be leading to muscle injury. So that also can be prevented. So similarly, when the stretching is done in a slow and focused manner, okay, concentration, that is very important. So if the stretching is done in a slow and concentrated manner and it helps to reduce the tension in the muscle, it can able to produce a relaxation of that whole body by means of having an elongation in the muscles. Next slide, please. Why to stretch? This I have told you already, especially to reduce the muscle tension. What is muscle tension referring to? Consider a person who haven't climbed the stairs. If you tell him to climb the stairs for at least five to six floors, the day evening, he will be experiencing a kind of stiffness and a pain owing to the excess amount of muscle work of the muscles of leg especially. That is called as a tension. This is especially because of the lack of training of the person for stair climbing. That is, can be reduced by means of stretching. A part of that, as I told you previously, it helps to maintain or helps to increase the range of motion and flexibility as well. And of course, to feel with the goodness of relaxation. Who can do the stretches? Of course, everyone can do the stretches regardless of the age or flexibility. But of course, children, when children are advised to do with the stretching, it is better to check with the flexibility of all the joints, especially children's those who have a hyperextensibility because of the lack of ligaments, a clinician's or physiotherapist prescription is necessary. How to modify the stretching in order to maintain the elongation. Similarly, elderly populations, they should be given with a proper advice what kind of restriction they should be having in while doing the stretching activities. Whereas regardless of the age, other group, adult group of population, everyone can do the stretching. And it should be gentle and easy. Gentle and easy referring to the persons who are doing the stretching, they should be able to feel mild amount of lengthening or elasticated feeling in the muscle, only mild amount. It should not be deliberately stretched to the maximum level. So the gentle and easy stretch, which could be helpful to do the stretching. Always the another component which will be asked is, when can we do these stretches? Always the stretching can be planned in the beginning of the day, morning stretches. Of course, it gives a good relaxation and it gives an elongation of the muscle and the feelness of the good will be there. So the activities can be started freshly. During the work, if a person is having a habit of working in continuous sitting position for hours and hours or continuous standing in hours and hours, during the rest period of 10 or 15 minutes in between, they can go for simple stretches that helps to maintain the muscle elongation and that could be preventing the risk of getting fatigue. Another thing is especially during the re relaxation period. Relaxation period, especially evening, we can say, or depending on the work she is shifts the person who is having a different working in different workshops okay especially like while listening a music or watching a tv by that time the person can able to go for these stretchings always next slide please this is a stretch diagram easy stretch can be done by everyone it is not necessary to have a prescription or it should not be necessary to have a 
teaching from the clinician or a physiotherapist because in this level the person will be holding the elasticated length for 10 to 15 seconds and that too with a very minimal force this is to maintain whereas if a stretch has to be done for a developmental purpose which means when there is a restricted movement and the person want to increase the range in those situations it is especially necessary to have a prescription it should be either from the clinician or from the therapist they should be seeking the advice and they should be learning how it can be done at home and then only it can be continued that is the most important thing whereas a drastic stretch which means a person who has to be trained for increasing in the elongation which example a gymnastic person okay initially the stretches will be done by the coach or by the physiotherapist where in which it has to be done through proper supervision that should not be done unsupervised and here also the duration of the stretch will be varied depending on especially for the drastic stretch next slide please mrs what are the do's and don'ts first the person who is doing a stretch he should not be experiencing any kind of pain the differentiation between a pain and a stretch should be realized by the person themselves that is the best way so realization of the pain and the stretch many people what they will complain is when a therapist is stretching they will be complaining of pain because most of the time they are not able to differentiate what is the stretch feel and what is the pain because they would have not gone for any kind of therapeutic stretching procedures second thing there should not be any kind of bouncing the bouncing activity which is like an overriding sometimes it could be caused by an injured muscle also associated with pain so there should not be any kind of bouncing and of course the most important component is good posture doing this stretching in an appropriate posture is very very important because if an incorrect posture is used for doing a stretching which will be leading to unnecessary muscle stretch as well as possibility of having injuries to the other muscles in this webinar i am going to teach with certain basic stretching techniques with the correct as well as incorrect postures next slide please so in order to begin a stretch it can be scheduled in any time of the day better we have to reduce external distractions that is the most important thing okay and a minimum of 10 to 15 minutes as a beginner 10 minutes should be more than enough and a combination of different muscle stretches has to be done the next one is especially a breathing activity has to be done which is considered as a warm up activity which i will tell you in the next slide the next one choosing what type of surface we have to make sure the use of a mat or a soft surface definitely a slippery surface should not be used at all prefer nowadays if you could see there are mat exercise mats are available in the market even at a lower cost it is better to use an exercise mat to do with the stretching techniques next slide please so warm up generally warm up is an activity in which the muscles will be lengthened to the available limit or the muscle is made to contract to the available limits or minimum limits also so here this warm up activity should be done for almost all the muscles which you are targeting to do for the stretching maybe 5 minutes to 10 minutes 
it should be enough generally this warm up activities it helps to increase the contraction of the muscles and thereby it increases the blood flow when a blood flow is increased to that area a specific muscle it helps to increase the local temperature so temperature rise will be present in the muscle ligament and tendons a very minimal rise okay sometimes it may not be measurable also by normal thermometers okay indwelling thermometers could be necessary okay which is out of the content so a very minimal rise in temperature will be occurring in the muscles okay so this temperature rise will help to prevent the injuries in the beginning stages of stretching okay can we go to the next slide please here is the video for the warm up activity here the person who is sitting can you play the video okay okay so first the person is doing a breathing activity the normal breathing the person should be doing for 3 to 5 number of repetitions and they should be start doing with the movements of the upper limb and lower limb the shoulders has to be moved in front and as well as to the sides to the fullest available limits 3 to 5 number of repetitions should be more than enough and then should be followed with the elbow movements of flexion and extension along with wrist upward and downward movements and encircling activities similarly for the lower limb knee to chest positions and the ankle movements ankle movements can be done like a circling way and that helps to maintain the length these combined activity can be considered as a warm up activity for the muscles once when this has been done then the person can proceed for the routine stretching activities next slide please in this webinar i am going to provide this the here mentioned stretching activities in terms of a correct posture and incorrect posture with the samples i am going to demonstrate i am i have inbuilt some videos for the references can you go to the next slide please here the hip flexor muscle which is called as iliopsoas for stretching this muscle the person can be starting with a kneeling position sim can you play the video please if you could see this person he is achieving a kneeling position with one leg bent and with the trunk and neck hyper extended next slide next video please whereas this person this guy when he is stretching he is maintaining the back in a very straight position this position ex exactly is the very good one mr sim can you simultaneously play play both the videos please look for the position of back on the left hand side is the incorrect one and on the right side which is the correct one in other words to say the goal on the left hand side is doing incorrectly as the neck is hyper extended that would be leading to inappropriate lengthening sometimes the persons they may not be able to breathe also so that will be leading to decreased holding position the patient has to release the position if they are not able to breathe that is most important next slide please the next one which is 
for the hamstrings this muscle is responsible for flexing the knee joint and for this hamstring stretch the person can start in a sitting position mr sir can you play the video of the left side one here if you could see the girl she is keeping the knees in a slightly flexed position and the ankle towards the face as she is facing the ankle towards the face that is pulling towards the face it could be leading to the stretch of achilles tendon also along with the hamstrings the next video please here if you could see this guy he also assumes the same sitting position but his knees is straight and the ankle is also maintained in a straight position if you could notice he is not struggling a lot in maintaining mr sim simultaneously can you play both the videos if you could look the knee flexion and the ankle pulling towards the face both the components which is done by the girl has not been done by the boy so flexing at the knee joint and pulling the ankle towards the face it is especially an inappropriate position which will be leading to the achilles tendon and the decreased muscle stretch of the hamstrings so correct posture has to be followed next slide please this is a quadriceps stretch the quadriceps is the muscle which is responsible for extension of the knee joint uh, can you play the first video please here if you could see the girl constantly she bend the knee and hold using the upper limb she is leaning forward and of course there is balance disturbances she is not able to maintain a proper standing position in order to maintain the balance she sways the body that is the most important in terms we have to look it out whereas the second video please mr sir the guy he is holding the legs and he is maintaining the straight position that is the most important one in terms of stretching of the quadriceps say for example this position may not be optimal for especially elderly people for elderly people they should be going for use of holding the chair mrs sim can you play both the videos simultaneously see the balance disturbance which is occurring on the left hand side video even though she is able to hold there is minimum swaying and the possibilities of fall is also there which can be avoided by means of appropriate maintenance of posture that is the most important one in terms of doing a knee extensor stretch next slide please the next one which is a calf muscle everyone know that calf muscle is a secondary heart of the body okay because this muscle has to push all the blood from the lower limb towards the proximal veins of course the calf muscle is getting attached to the calcaneum the heel bone and where in which that portion of that muscle where the attachment is happening that area is called as the achilles tendon in order to do this achilles tendon stretch mr sim can you please the play the video the person has to assume a standing position here the left side video left side of the patient's limb is stretched can you play once more
the starting position and here the patient is bending the knee slightly and lifting the ankle so when she lifts the ankle automatically the stretch force which is happening to that tendon or muscle will be getting reduced automatically so the purpose of the stretch cannot be achieved that is the elongation may not be occurring over there the second video please in the second video note the position of the knees and the ankle the knees is also straight ankle is also straight and also it is on the ground until the heel so this until the heel if if it is placed on to the ground then uh, exact stretch will be happen mr sam both the videos simultaneously please note the position knee flexion and lifting up of the ankle from the ground those are incorrect positions especially okay that has to be avoided next slide please this is most important one many people they will be having a problem of hyperextension that is the medical terminology of course there will be excess amount of movement in certain joints that is the layman terminology for a hyperextension here if you could look on to this video which is on the left hand side mr sim can you please play the left side video please if you could see the girl is having slight hyper extensibility so if there is a hyper extensibility the muscle should not be stretched that is the most important one we have to consider if anyone having this hyper extensibility before you could stretch it is better to consult and then stretch it should not be stretched as all alone by themselves whereas if you could see the next video the guy who is about to stretch the biceps he is not having the hyper extension so when he is pushing the forearm back in order to stretch the biceps it stretches appropriately this hyper extensibility is quite common in certain group of people so always it is better to check the joint whether the normal range of movement is present or is there any kind of hyper extensibility is that present okay that is the most important component before you could start with a bicep stretch thanks mr sim next slide please this is uh, the next one is referring to the elbow extensor stretch the common pitfall which the normal people will do is the first slide first video please mr sim when they are about to do they will be extending the back and then they will be lifting the hands up that is the shoulder here especially the neck and the anterior abdominal muscles and anterior chest muscles are getting stretched along with the triceps which can be minimized by means of doing an appropriate stretch as shown in the next video next video please here if you could see the person standing maintaining the body and the limb in a very straight position that is the most appropriate one so maintaining this straight spine is considered the most important then only the stretch force will be getting transferred to the triceps muscle mr sim can you please play both the videos note the position the hyper extension which is happening in the back which will automatically leading to decrease mobility of the shoulder so this has to be avoided next slide please 
The next one is a back extensor stretch. That is, as a whole, we are going to do the stretch for the back muscles. Mr. Sam, can you please the first video? Here, the person who is doing the stretch is lifting the neck and then trying to bring the knees towards the chest. When they are doing so, sometimes if they are not able to do a normal breathing, they will be holding the breath. Next video, please. You see this simultaneously. The neck lifting and the fullest range. Okay. Even though the person is not lifting to how much ever, that is the normal right side one, she is bringing and holding to the maximum. Whereas the one which is on the left side, it mimics, it's too closer to the chest, but as the neck is flexed. Okay. Can you play both the videos? The neck is closer, so the knees appears too closer to the chest. Whereas the normal person on the right side video is doing appropriately, but as the neck is in a flat position, it is appearing a bit not closer to the chest. So this is the right one. Okay, neck flexion should not be occurring when they are about to do with a back extensor stretch. That is considered as a very, very important one. And sometimes the patient has to hold the breath, especially persons with having some kind of disorders or medical problems. They should not be holding the breath at any point of time. Of course, if they have some kind of stretching, or if they have some kind of medical disorders, it is better to consult the physician or the therapist before they could commence these kind of stretching activities. Next slide, please. A part of this, there are so many stretches. I have given only uh, samples for these stretches. Okay. Owing to the limitation of time, I was not able to provide you with more number of examples towards the correct and incorrect postures. There is stretches called as pretzel stretch, which helps to stretch the lateral side of the muscles of thigh. We call that as iliotibial band. Whereas the double knee torso rotation, this is called as the stretching for the lateral wall muscles of the chest. The chest wall muscles on which is present on the lateral side, it helps to stretch. So that's why it is called. Whereas a butterfly stretch, it helps to stretch the anterior chest muscles. And cobra, of course, it stretches the anterior stretch, neck and the upper chest muscle. Similarly, the other stretches include shoulder, overhead, and neck muscle stretches. So, when we, we want to do a routine set of exercises, we should be combining few from upper limb, few from lower limb, and one or two stretches for the spine that should be more than enough to maintain the flexibility of a person. Next slide, please. Of course, everyone will be going for traveling at one point. Either it could be a short distance traveling or long distance traveling. During travel, we can do with some kind of stretching activities. Especially, it should be a combination of activities. Combination of stretching of different portions of muscles. Few from neck, few from upper lip and few from lower lip. Here, this combination, here I have shown you with eight different stretches which includes the stretch of a neck, stretch of a shoulder, stretch of a back, and then stretch of upper limb and lower limb muscles. Of course, this helps to maintain the flexibility and of course, it increases the blood flow and thereby it could prevent the fatigue of the muscle. So, a relaxation of these muscles can be attained and the person can able to drive the vehicle if they are going for a long distance travel. 
Similarly, we have stretching techniques for each and individualized activity for running, for swimming, like that each and every sports activities we have. Or even we can design a stretching for stretching while relaxing or stretching for airplane travelers. Likewise, we can design. Next slide, please. Once when this stretching, which is done for about 15 to minutes or 10 to 15 minutes a range, generally it is necessary to do with the cool down activities. Cool down activities are nothing but as like the warm up activity. Here it is not necessary to do a breathing activity, but of course the range of motion exercises should be done. The same two to three number of repetitions should be more than enough in order to make the soft tissues, that is the muscles, to return back to the original position from the lengthening which has been happened earlier through the stretching. So always it is necessary to do with the cool down activity. Next slide, please. Here is the tips for successful stretch. Always it is necessary to do a combination of stretch, which a combination referring to a neck stretch, an upper limb stretch, spine stretch, and lower limb stretches. And it should be designed so that starting from easy stretches, like a hold of seven to 10 seconds when you are beginning, and then gradually increasing to 15 seconds when you progress. And it is also necessary to do with two number of stretches when you are beginning, and then you can gradually progress to three and four according to the comfortability. And you can modify the stretches on once in a fortnight of time. That is a combination also you can able to do. Only thing, if you are combining an activity, it would be consuming the time. So make sure you are allocating that much of time to do these stretching exercises. Especially, as I told you, holding of the stretch can be taken to a maximum of 30 seconds. Especially if you are doing the stretch for increasing the range of motion which can be a bit sustained as well. But of course, it is necessary to get an appropriate clinician's advice or therapist advice before you could go for your developmental stretches. And always it is necessary to go with two to four number of repetitions per stretch. And when you are doing it combined, it would be leading to a total of time spending around 15 to 20 minutes of duration. That is the most important time. And especially as I am addressing the stretching with reference to the general public also, I haven't mentioned about the therapeutic stretching, what we do in the passive stretching component, especially persons, those who have any kind of medical illness, whether if they could have a hypertension or if they could have a diabetes, it is always better to have a consultation or to have an opinion from the clinician or the therapist before they could start with this stretching exercises. Next slide. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions, you can. Wow, that was a lot of interesting and valuable information given by Mr. Rama. I hope everyone was able to digest it. But even if you don't, you can always visit our YouTube channel to rewatch this session as many times as you prefer. Now, let us move into the Q&A session. If you have any questions for Mr. Rama, feel free to leave at the comment below. One of the audience was uh, asking about, can carpal tunnel syndrome happen due to improper stretching position? Carpal tunnel is a condition wherein which 
the tunnel is getting narrow it could be happening because of the thickening of the structures which is present in the tunnel it can happen due to injury when a stretching has been done without a prescription or if you are drastically elongating a soft tissue in those situations if it is leading to injury then it can cause a carpal tunnel syndrome otherwise in case of carpal tunnels we will not be stretching when the acute phase is on okay mr rama uh, i think uh, there's another question over there yes. um the the audience is asking will there be any overstretch happening and if there is is there any way uh, is there any sign of overstretch generally for general public it is not mentioning mentioning to as overstretch everyone will be knowing about the normal movement limitations say for example shoulder means to the level of high okay overhead activity if they are able to do the overhead activity to the normal levels that should be okay which is not considered as a overstretch but if when they are doing as i showed you towards the elbow bicep stretch if there is a hyper extension which is happening beyond the normal joint range if the movement is happening it is considered as the overstretch and that is the sign of overstretch where in which it should be stopped and a consultation has to be done okay thank you very much mr rama um i think there's also another question from the audience um Mr. Eugene is asking, uh, "May I? Um, is there any specific stretches for person with rheumatoid arthritis?" Yes, of course. Rheumatoid arthritis is a condition which commonly affects the hand and feet, which would be leading to deformity in the hands. The deformity can be of any type. it can be either swanite deformity or botanite deformity of course it is truly referring to like uh, the medical uh, condition one okay so here when the person is in the early stages of the disease if you could do with the stretch for the finger flexor tendons example like this way if you could do with the stretching for this finger flexor tendons that helps to maintain the elasticity of this tendon and thereby we can prevent to a certain extent and similarly when there is an initiation of the swanneck deformity or a botanite deformity like this here this is occurring especially due to a rupture of the central slip and lateral slip of the extensor tendons okay you cannot able to prevent or do anything on the lateral or central slip ruptures but you can prevent the tightness or contractures which is occurring at the flexor component so for rheumatoid arthritis stretching of the finger flexors helps in preventing the occurrence of deformities or prevent in the exaggeration of the deformities Okay, thank you, Mr. Rama, for the detailed explanation. Um, so, since our time is up, so we will just uh, stop the Q and A session for now. If you feel, if you still have any questions, feel free to drop us any uh, any comments down there. Then um, after the session, I'm sure Mr. Rama will help you guys clear off your doubts. Okay, so thank you very much, Mr. Rama. Just a gentle reminder for everyone: kindly fill in the survey form on the link provided below, so that we can provide you with the e-certificate. So, since we are at the end of the session, I would like to say thanks again to our speaker, Mr. Rama, for all the wonderful knowledge that he had shared with us, 
and to all of you who have spent your precious time being here with us today. Thank you so much. So until next time, bye bye. Sim. Of course, I would like to share one more information. I have I have demonstrated few of the stretching activities wherein which we will be conducting a course named as optimizing flexibility, muscle flexibility, wherein which the complete activities of the stretching and how stretching helps to maintain the muscle flexibility will be done in that course. Okay, thank you for that information, Mr. Rama. So thanks a lot for the for the details and the tips. So we'll see you again next time. Bye. Thank you.